Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared, and today we are going to talk about how to adjust a lock bar. Basically, how to adjust your detent, how to get rid of lock rock, lock play, things like that. So, um, I did have to do this knife once before in the past, and now I need to adjust it again. Getting some lock rock again, not a big deal. But... There's a lot of different things that could be an issue that this problem will solve as well. Like, like if you have a light detent, a very light detent, we're going to talk about how to fix that. If your detent's too strong, if, um, what else? Um, also the tools, the tools, I will link everything down below and we'll talk about what they are for. I might not get to use all of them, but I'll show you the instance where you you would might need to. Now, in this video, I'm also going to be increasing the detent strength on this war spear knife. So stay tuned for that. So, you know what? Let's just start getting into it. So I'm going to take this apart really fast. And that's where your tools are going to come into place where you're going to need, you know, to take apart your knife, right? So after taking it apart really quickly, because this thing will come apart really fast. After you take it apart, you know, obviously depending on what the issue is, because if it's a light detent, then you're going to want to strengthen it. If the detent's too strong, it might be a couple different issues. So I'll show you things to check on to see what that issue might be. Also, some things like uh, lock rock, you know, not lock play, but actual lock rock. Because lock rock and lock play is different. Now, one way you can find out. So, or, okay. So, let me just do this before I take this apart. If you have this issue where it's, you're getting the play right there. You can put a little tension on your lock bar. And if it goes away, then, then, then strengthening your lock bar pressure, pressure will get rid of it. Right. But if it will not go away, even if you put pressure on the lock bar, then it's most likely in the pivot and then this isn't going to work. But, you know, you just got to figure out what the issue is and then you can figure out how to fix it accordingly. So this thing comes apart extremely easy. This is the concept goblin, by the way. I don't mess with that. So. Get rid of everything. You see they have a little washer in here like Tucson does. That's really cool. Now, with this one, this one's really easy, okay? So I'm just going to bend the lock bar over. Now, if I had too strong of a lock bar, right? And the lock bar pressure was just too strong. First thing I want to do is I want to look at this hole right here. You see the D10 hole? Right here, this is just a little diamond rod. You see this little hole right here? Um, there might be a burr on it. Let me wipe this off because it is a little dirty. So you might want to grab a jeweler's loop or a magnifying glass and really look at that hole. Mine is good, but sometimes there is a burr around if there is a burr around the edge, you'll barely be able to see it. So what you'll do is just take this little thing and just knock it down like this. It's more just one of these little diamond things. You can kind of stick it in there and spin it. Or kind of hit the edges like this. And just knock it off. You can also use something like this, a little ceramic um, piece, and go like that. That will knock it off. So that is pretty common. So now if your detent was too strong and that wasn't the issue with the burr around the detent hole, you might want to adjust it out a little bit. So you'd have to take off the, the lock bar insert with this screw, take it off, take your clip off and bend it just slightly, just a little bit. A little bit goes a long way, guys. And listen, if you're not comfortable doing this, do not do it. Send it to somebody who is. I am not recommending you to modify or mess up your knife in any way, shape, or form. So uh, um, make sure you, you know, you're confident in what you're doing. Now, my problem is I need to bend it 
in because my lock bar is is it's not um putting enough pressure and that's why i'm getting a little bit of rock so i'm going to slightly bend it just a little bit now if this lock bar was just so strong i couldn't i didn't have no enough force to bend it and it's just not working you can heat it up you can heat up right there oh just a little bit and it'll make it malleable. Now make sure you don't touch it and burn yourself, but it'll make it softer so that you can bend it. Not that quick, you'll have to put it a little on there a little bit longer. And then after you bend it to the place you want it at, then cool it down really quick, throw it in the freezer or something, and that's fine, but make sure you, you know, bend it to where you want it. But make, like I said, a little goes a long way. So like even right now with the little bit I've done, it's most likely good. Make sure this thing is not hot. This titanium heats up very fast. But I'm just putting a little pressure. I'm going to put it back together and see if this works yet. Give it just a little bit more. All right. Let me put this thing back together really quick and see if it worked. If not, we'll have to adjust it again. Like I said, a little bit goes a long way. Now, if... You were getting lock rock where when you push on the spine of the blade, when you push on the spine of the blade, the lock bar is moving from the pressure. Every time you push, it starts going like this. It literally starts pushing it out of the way. You might want to take it apart and to get a little tiny piece of sandpaper and just rub right there a couple times. I mean, very, very gently, just ch -ch -ch, that's it. But what it does is it'll rough that texture up on the steel um, lock bar insert and it'll give it a little bit more grip. You can see mine needs to be cleaned because sometimes it's just a little too slick. And when you're, uh, blade goes down on it it's just sliding it out of the way so you can give it just a little bit of texture that can improve it now if you look at mine you can see how it's kind of textured see how it's got all that texture that's basically what i'm saying see, you don't want it slick and then that's sometimes why it's getting pushed out of the way i'm going to put this thing back together really quick and check it and bam there we go so perfect no play you can see it's not rattling no more no lock rock no lock play it's perfect let me zoom out just a tiny bit action is even better wow flick it a couple times check it again perfect so you see how it wasn't much i didn't have to do much to get rid of it sometimes you have to do a little bit more sometimes you have to do it twice you know to really get it um good this is the second time I've done this one. It wound up coming back after months, but it was perfect for months before it came back. Not an issue, and it was that fast before. So sometimes it's incredibly easy to fix a little issue that could drive you absolutely nuts. Now, like I said, it'd be the opposite way if your detent was too strong, if the burr wasn't around your detent hole. That's a lot of times the problem. If you're dealing with a lock bar that's incredibly strong, you might have to heat it up a little bit, but I would try your best not to have to do that, especially if you have other materials around it, like carbon fiber, G10, and things like that. You know, you got to make sure you strip it. You got to make sure nothing's in the way, and you want to be very careful with that, um, and don't burn yourself. But, and then, like I said, if it has lock rock, where when you go like this, the lock bar is moving because you're putting pressure. You can take it apart and just, just barely touch that lock bar insert with a. And if it doesn't have a lock bar insert, um, I'd be careful with that one. You don't want to take off the um, the the uh, because they carbonized the lock face. You don't want to take off that that carbonized lock face uh, because it's a thin layer. Um, so in that case. You know, I would just get it recarbonized or something, but 
if we're talking about a lock bar insert and getting a little bit of lock rock, or if it's a steel lock bar, like a liner lock or something like that, you can do that very easily. Uh, liner locks are very easy to do this with because they're very easy to bend and move. So, all right, let's get this one adjusted. So this one, it just has too light of a detent, way too light of a detent. So let's get this thing apart so we can get to that lock bar. Hopefully everything goes nice and smooth with this guy. The other one that I have has lock rock, as, or sorry, lock play as well. So I, I will be doing both of these, but I'll just be showing this one in the video. So because it'll be the exact same thing that I'm going to do to get rid of either one, whether it was lock rock or a light detent. Now, if I had too strong of a detent, it'd be the exact opposite. And like I said before, um, after checking for a burr around, a lot of times people think that they're, they have a, a too strong of a detent and that's not the case. It's that there is a burr around the detent hole, which makes it incredibly tough to open up. It makes the detent so strong. Okay, so this one, we need to get this liner out. I can actually probably adjust it without getting it out, but I should just do it just because. Let me get this guy out. Get all these parts over here. We have steel bearings on these guys. For some reason, I thought they were ceramic, but I guess not. Okay, these... Well, that's how you lose something. <clears throat> These spin right off, it feels like, because they're hooked to the screw. But I seem, seems like I can just take them right off. Let me try pulling this out. Taking apart knives like these are a little scary sometimes because, you know, the fit and finish isn't the best and they have more of a chance of using red Loctite. They have more of a chance of not going back together as good. They have more of a chance of just having issues. Okay, so you see how we have this cutout here. That's an interesting cutout. So we have a cutout right here and in the hole. Now all we're going to do is I want to grip this because I do not want to, I want it to bend forward of this notch, not behind it in front of it. So I'm going to grip it right here. Sometimes I put it in my vise and do it like that. That did a lot. Okay. Maybe that was a little too much. Um, You know what though? Just a little less. Like I said, these liner locks are very easy to do and very easy to overdo, so be careful. Let's put it back together and see how it works. I'll worry about the clip later. Um, I'll have it back together in two seconds, so you guys don't have to sit through it. Ooh, be care very careful of these two. See how this is moving? That can give you issues especially with like lock rock and things like that it doesn't feel like you have too much lock rock but just make sure you don't lose that because that is your stop pin okay so i got it back together it is nice and centered the detent is way better on the flipper tab however it's a little too strong now not on the flipper tab but for the reverse flicking hole. In this reverse flicking hole, it's kind of awkward to get to already. Like, it's not like I just put my finger in there. I can't do that. I have to literally adjust a weird grip to get to it. And it's incredibly strong now for that. It's actually just an awkward hole. Um, you know, it's like, you see how it's like facing kind of this way instead of this way. So it's just weird, but the flipping action is fantastic, um, but I'll probably, you can hear the detent. Now listen to that. Now that's a good detent, but because the way the hole's adjusted or the hole is, I'm going to probably adjust it just slightly weaker. 
man, I like that detent though. Like it's even drops good for the flipping action, but dang it, I, I hate not having that reverse flicking hole. So I know it'll get lighter and lighter if I just keep playing with it and I could probably get to the point to where reverse flicking it and thumb flicking it's okay, but yeah, yeah, it's pretty strong now. So I'll just have to readjust it and do the same thing, but just, you know, bend it back just a little bit. Okay. Let's go back just a little bit. Too much. Maybe a little tiny bit more. Hold it for a second. That seems good. Yeah, that seems a lot better. Let me try that. All right, now it is perfect. It is absolutely perfect now. Nice and smooth drop. I can reverse flick it. The detent, nice and strong. Yeah, that is so much better. And listen. You can hear the detent click in, nice and centered. I can probably fail it now, yeah, if I really wanted to, but it's also, it's so much more reliable than it was. But you got to see there how I would have adjusted the, the, the lock bar strength if it was too strong and too weak, or too weak and too strong. Yeah, so much better. Um, let me just make sure all these screws are good, but yeah, there you guys go. Um, I know, uh, sometimes this can be a little nerve wracking to do to your knife because you don't want to ruin your knife, but just make small adjustments, small adjustments. And if you're really not confident in doing it, then yeah, leave it to somebody else to do, but you'd be surprised how easy it is, you know, as long as you just make small adjustments and don't be afraid to... Put your knife back together and double check it and you know um don't try to do it all at once if you're if you're very uncomfortable or if you haven't done it before then definitely you know you're gonna you probably might have to take apart your knife and put it back together a couple times just to make sure it's perfect because you might not have the you might not understand what is too much or not enough, right? Because that was my issue in the beginning was that I would, I'd make such small adjustments that it wouldn't even really do much. But then once I learned like right around the, the, the amount I need to do, why aren't these screws going in? All right. Well, that's the... Is that the wrong? No, that's the right screws. I don't know. I'll figure out this clip later, guys. Um, there you guys go. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.